We're talking to Luke Stratford from uh, Quality Energy. You talked about um, everyone who's using power could be doing it better. Does that also apply to the national grid? Could we do? Could, could we doing it? Could we be doing a better job with that? I think so. And there, look, we talk about this. You know, it's winter months at the moment, but uh, yeah. I can guarantee in three months, summer demands are going to become a big issue, as it does every year. Why? Well, seriously, you guys are in the business of finding efficiencies in just about everything yeah. uh, you know, to do with power. Uh, your equipment allows you to do 50% efficiency improvements, 75% in some instances. Yeah. So why aren't some of the biggest players in the, in, in the game coming to you guys and saying, come on, help us do what you guys are doing for the national grid? Well, look, I mean, some do, but some just aren't educated. There's so much um, hysteria around solar energy and doing, you know, things to do with solar in okay. the market. Um, but the well, people, renewables have a role. They, they do right? have a role. They have a role. They do but at the moment, role. we also understand that renewables can't answer all our demands. Exactly. And, and, it, and you just, you nailed it. It's demand. And there's, there's too much supply. <laughs> there's not enough, sorry, there's not enough supply and there's too much demand during those so, peak, Okay, peak you periods. said in three months' time. Yep. The annual problem of brownouts and, uh, and warnings by government saying to us, listen, don't use your air conditioner between 9 and 10 or yep. 9 and 12 because we're, you know, we might see a, a number of, uh, of disruptions. What, when are we going to see yeah. a season uh, you know, that's going to be seamless without any disruption? Uh, are we years away from that I because think- we're still immature? I think so. I think we're, we're immature wow. when it comes to, you know, efficiencies. Um, well, I would have thought, look, I would have thought in a country like ours, you've, and you've, you've travelled the world, I have. one of the great problems in Australia is the tyranny of distance. Mm. And the tyranny of distance creates problems, whether it be trucking and haulage or, or, or getting power Correct. delivered. Yeah? yeah. Haven't we woken up? Haven't we got the, haven't we grasped that if we, if we are efficient in what we're doing, yeah. Uh, everything improves. Absolutely, and we need less generation to, to achieve the same outcomes. So yeah. it makes perfect sense. Our machine it? doesn't have to work twice as hard to deliver to the, 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 the demand that we need. Exactly right. And so it's craziness, and we, and we talk about this every year, and we've got products out there that can help fix these problems, um, but there's not enough being done, and, and customers aren't educated enough to understand the benefits. Okay, so if there's a customer, uh, a business that is, is planning on uh, uh, enlarging uh, and growing and, and uh, taking on some uh, new challenges, who should they be looking out to, uh, to speak to them? Should they be reaching out to you? Yeah, they should be. They should, and they, they need to know who to reach out to, but they okay. should be reaching out to a company like ours right. that can help put pieces of the puzzle in, play, in place so that um, you know, they're going to need electricity, we know that, but it's about what they do with it, doing it as efficiently as possible, and understanding the, the different technologies that are out there that can help them. And that's the biggest thing. They just need to be led down a path um, by someone they can trust. Okay. And the other thing I want to ask, you say we, we call you in. Yeah. Say we call Quality Energy in to come and attend to our uh, energy needs and to make us more efficient. Over what period of time? And I know it's, each case is different and they're unique and they all have represent different challenges. But you would be doing enough of these to know that... Can you bring efficiencies within a week, within a month, within three months? What sort of time frame? Yeah. And again, don't, I'm not holding you down to, no. well, you, you promised us a month and it's going to take two months. From experience, how long does it take you to turn around a business from be, being this inefficient uh, user of, of power yep. to being an infinitely more efficient unit? Yeah, and it's a, it's a great question. And I, and I spoke earlier about there being a roadmap because um, some, some of the wins are instant. So we can go in and implement, right? yeah, implement a solution and you get the benefit from, from day <laughs> one. But there are others that can take a little bit longer. So it's about, you know, the, we call it the low hanging fruit in what we do. So we, we try and go after those first because we want to obviously A, prove ourselves and B, prove to the business, you know, and get the best benefit for the business in a short space of time. So, um, but you know, it, some people are just like, you know, solar, 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 but that's just, that overlays the efficiency. So that can sort of mask the issue at times. So it's all about using the energy as efficiently as possible and then potentially overlaying that with a potential solar system that's actually going to make, you know, reduce their energy costs, you know, as much as possible. So. Well, it seems to me it's a bit like, uh, if I may use the analogy of the, um, uh, the two-way verification system. Yeah. You need the two steps 
yeah. in order to get the system up and running. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. And you're almost saying to me, if, if, if I can translate what's, what, what we've been talking about, it seems to me that if we want to run our businesses as efficiently and as lean as possible, it, it, we can use more than one power source, mm -hmm. but it's the way we put them together. Harness them yep. and allow them to deliver the best possible uh, delivery system uh, yeah. with the minimum of fuss. Absolutely, absolutely. That's, right. the, that's the best way to do it. Okay, well, Quality Energy is the name of the company. Luke Stratford is the uh, MD. Uh, Dad is in the background if you need any assistance. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's taking a bit of a chill at the moment and relaxing because it is, uh, 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 must be a, an enormous uh, bit of excitement for him to be able to sit back and see what you guys started, what he started about yeah, 30 years ago. Absolutely. Um, gaining attraction and, and building on what was a terrific idea, a simple idea, and of course, with time and with the technology changes, yeah. it's just grown and grown and grown. Yeah. What's, what's the next challenge for uh, quality energy? Yeah, well, I, we, we've got a lot of work going on overseas in the oil and gas field at the moment, so we, we're really big on that. We want to grow our sort of footprint um, on an international level. Obviously, we're a little bit restricted at the moment, but um, we do... We Wouldn't you be considered an essential service if you're heading overseas to do the sorts of biz business and work you, you guys are doing? Yeah, it hasn't come to a point yet with any of our projects that are happening at the moment where I've had to travel. Um, there's a few things sort of sitting idle at the moment, but a lot of the companies overseas, they're also sitting idle, so we're sort of, we're doing the same. Wow. Um, but yeah, we've got some great opportunities there. Um, we really enjoy the challenges of you know breaking new ground, and I want to get into the, the higher voltages and um, the more intricate type stuff. So over the next few years, as we grow, and um, we've got a great team now and an office in Brisbane, so we're we're a national brand now, which I'm really proud of. Something that I really wanted to achieve, and um, and we do have that now. So it, it's about just uh, getting our name out there more and. Um, and showing people that there's someone here that can help them and, and really doing that. How many in the, uh, in the business at the moment? Uh, there's 12 of us at the moment. 12 yeah. and uh, looking to build and add new parts to the business. Absolutely. We love you know, people that have got new ideas and um, can help add to what we've already got. We've got a great core business, but um, we're always on the lookout for new people and new technology as well. How much, how much say do you guys have with government? Are you talking to them at all? No. Were they, were they talking to you? No, it's something, it's a, it's a, it's a good point and it's something we're, we're thinking about at the moment, especially around the power factor and the demand on the grid. I mean, I don't think there's probably enough being done at a government level um, about helping um, protect the grid, um, when, especially when you've got products out there that are proven, been around for 20, 30 years, that can actually you know, you know, have really tangible results, exactly, um, straight away as well. That's the biggest thing. So. It seems like there's a bit of a, a bit of a gap there. I mean, the the retailers out there are, they're charging for this poor power factor, so they understand the benefit of it. But is there enough being done at government level? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Well, you left us with enough to think about. <laughs> uh, Luke Stratford, thank you for joining us on the Informer. Uh, look, come back and tell us more uh, when uh, some of those projects overseas uh, are likely to take off. I'd love to. Thank Good you for your time, George. Thank you.